hold up, hold up. It's the, it's the way you pull up, pull up, pull up. Wait, wait, wait. Now we get to talk about everything you say. Analyzing topics, my knowledge. Wait, wait, wait. You think you're about to get it? Crank it up again. Hold up, hold up. Wait, wait, wait. Pull up, pull up. Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up, my people, man, thank you for joining for another episode of The Weighing Show, man, we in the building, and we got a lot to talk about, man, you already know it's boxing, 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 because we over here at The Weighing Show, we love boxing, I go by the number Little, I go by the name of Francis. That's my man Greg over there. Yes, sir. Okay, before we get busy, man. Before we get yeah. busy, you know what we got yeah. to do. Yeah, man. Play one more time, man. You guys drop it on him. Play one more time. Let go, people. You already know. Shout out. Hold up. It's the way in. Call up and you're waiting. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing when you think it's about to end. Shit, we crank it up again. Hold up. Wait in. Call up and you're waiting. Now we get to scrutinize everything you're saying. Switching up the topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing and we do this every day. Never ever duck a fade. Hold up. Hold up. Greg and friends is keep it popping. Keep it popping. Dropping knowledge, switching up the daily topics. Switch it up. The latest interviews, okay, okay, we got it. Okay, we got it. your favorite podcast, my boy, yeah, we the hottest. Hold up, you gotta wait, 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 articulate, explain it, explain it, lay it all out for the bait and drop some game. No, we ain't playing. Two smart fans, let me know where you're at. It's all about a fight, who got that strap? All your biases get slayed, unless you boys are getting the fade. Hold up, it's the way in, call up and you're waiting. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge, we ain't playing. When you think it's about to end, should we crank it up again? Hold Hello. No, that's the way. That's the way we gotta do it. That's the way we got to do it, man. It's yeah. the way. It's show. <laughs> Make no mistake about it. We gotta bring the energy, like always. Never duplicated. Never, ever, ever duplicated. Always original. Shout out to you, Greg. What's happening, my brother? What's going on, man? I'm good, man. Happy Wednesday to everybody. All of our listeners and viewers out there. Definitely appreciate everybody in the house. Ramiro Flores already in the house. And life lessons, man. Salute to you both. Definitely, man. We're here for another one. And yeah, man, everybody, don't forget to um hit the like and subscribe buttons, man, because it does help with the visibility of the channel. And it helps us, you know, bring you a lot of cool content and a lot more things and giveaways and all the kind of stuff that we plan on doing. So definitely continue to support us and hit that bell icon so you know exactly when we go live, man. And also, what I got to say, Instagram, too. Follow us on Instagram, man, at The Way In Boxing, where we give you all the latest news and notes and Anything that's got to do with boxing, man, you um just hit us up on that channel and you could DM us any ideas you want to talk about, any fighters that you want to see, fighters, trainers, anybody, man. We try to do it all, man. So definitely shout out to everybody. But Francis, man, what's good? What's happening, brother? What's yeah. happening? You know, you know, I'm always excited when I get up here and I get to be with my weighing family and we get to talk boxing, man. We get to break down boxing to give our take on how we feel about, you know what I'm saying, the game of boxing. And then on top of it, man, we have an amazing uh, um fighter. That we're gonna introduce to you on the yes. way show, and we're gonna have a great time, you know. What I'm saying talking to them and see how their career is going and so on and so forth. But before all that, we got some news that we have to get into because this is fight week, ladies this and gentlemen. Week. It's yeah. fight week. There's tons of great fights happening this weekend that we must highlight because we're like two days away, three days away from you know what I'm saying the action getting started. Is there any particular fight that you are um excited to see more than another uh well honestly two fights i'm equally excited about is uh jerron ennis taking on uh sergey lipinets and i'm looking forward to the connor ben and sammy vargas fight man definitely um that's another fight that i'm looking forward to so those two i would say are on the top of my list of what i want to look for um this weekend man. how about you what are you looking forward to yeah, definitely, man. I'm looking to be honest with you. I'm looking forward to all the fights. It isn't like a particular well, fight. Yeah, in general, to, yeah. Um, in general, for myself, for myself. Um, yeah. but how can you not? How can you not want to see if Jerron Ennis is the real deal? How can you not want to see if Jerron Ennis can dispatch of uh, of Sergio Lipinets in 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 convincing style? Right. Similar to Virgil Ortiz, the way he dispatched of Maurice Hooker in in good style, right? 
I agree, man, because it was unfortunate what happened with his last fight with um Chris Van Heerden in the, the whole cut. So we didn't really get to see him, you know, display his talents in what was, you know, that step up fight for him. So he's getting another chance with another solid name, another former world champion. So, um, yeah, man, this is his time to shine and put his name out there and, you know, put his name into the group with the next level uh, welterweights, you know, where he's talking world title. For sure, for sure. And we, actually, we're going to start off with that card, man. That card is taking place um, Saturday, April 10th at the Mohegan Sun Casino on Cassville, Connecticut, USA. So you already know what it is, man. You got it. It's on Showtime. It's going to be showing the fight. Showtime, yeah. The main event is definitely Jerron Ennis versus uh, Sergey Sergey Lipinets. My apologies. And then you got, uh, man, this one is going to, this one right here is going to be a tough one. But I got uh, Jerwin. I'm going to say Jerwin. Just say uh, Jerwin, man. Yeah, Jerwin. I would say that too. And, and, and Jonathan uh, Rodriguez, they're going to be the co-main event, and they will be fighting for the International Boxing Federation World Super Flyweight title. So there's going to be a title on the f- title on the line on this card, which will be in the main event. Hmm. The third fight. I'm excited about the third fight as well because we got Elimantis. Saniosis fighting Thomas Delorme. Now, we all understand that Thomas Delorme came out firing out the gate, stumped yeah. a little bit, but has been able to pick back up his career and get some wins. So this is going to be an exciting fight. The reason why this is going to be an action-packed yeah. fight because Elimantis, he comes forward. He comes right. forward, he comes forward, and he throws a lot of shots. Thomas Delorme also is willing to stay in the pocket and throw punches. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a knock on in this one, man. I would not. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that, man. I, for sure, if not a full knockdown, I mean, somebody's going to knock out, sorry. Somebody's going to get knocked down in that fight yeah. for sure, man. Because, yeah. um, like you said, they both come forward. And Delorme is not afraid to sit there in the pocket and trade with you. So, um, definitely a good fight. Definitely, definitely a good fight. So, that's one to um, look out for, for sure. And then, um, also on, on that card, the first fight you know, of the night, the super welterweight fight between Evan Holyfield. Yes, that is the son of the great... Evander Holyfield will be real, real. On, yep, he is five and no, and he'll be taking on Nicholas Compton, who is two and three. So we're looking forward to that fight. We're gonna be speeding through um bringing these cards because our guests will be on very shortly. We want to make sure we get through as much of the fights as we possibly can. Um, what do you think about so that card right there is gonna be exciting? Anything in particular you're looking to see? Um, you know what? I'm actually looking forward to see Evan Holyfield fight because I've actually never seen him fight before. So um definitely want to see what. What he has in store, man. See if he, if he fights like his old man or if he brings something different. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So that that, that would be good to see, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> that would be people in here strong. We yeah, yeah. Good to see, man. Um, also, we got uh, at the Copper Box Arena, Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park, Hackney, Wick, United Kingdom. Yes, we sir. have, and it will be on Sky Sports. We have Savannah Marshall, who will be headlining. This card against Maria Lindbergh for the WBO World Female Middleweight title. Are you excited about to see Savannah Marshall? Again, her last performance against Hannah Rankin, she put on a performance. You know what? I'm excited to see her fight because I think if she looks good, I mean, I know Clarissa Shields has been, you know, calling her name to possibly get on that uh, Joshua and Fury card which I think will be amazing. So, um, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to that fight, man, to see how she performs because, obviously, Clarissa Shields had a good performance. Maybe that fight could happen, man. You know, they cross paths in the amateurs and, um, you know, like to see them do it again in the pros, man, because I think she's the only one to defeat Clarissa Shields, to my knowledge. So um, that's definitely a fight that I'm looking for. But the pros is a different thing, man. The definitely, are- definitely. Yeah. Now, I stand corrected. <laughs> I did say... That they're headlining in the car, but I take that back. Scratch that. We also have Shannon Courtney against E. Bain Bridges for the vacant WBA World Female Bantamweight title. So this card has four title fights on the line. Yeah. Four title fights on the line, people. Four title fights on the line. Shannon Courtney, we all know from the UK. Um, 
She's six and one, taking on Ebane Bridges. If I'm not mistaken, Ebane uh, is a good fighter, man. She is five and zero, oh, and this one is going to be a barn burner. I think this one. Yeah, and I think she uh, fought just a few weeks ago too, man. She fought just a few weeks ago, yeah. man. Is she the blonde bomber, no? The br- yeah, the blonde bomber. That's her name. The yeah, blonde bomber. Shout out to Ebane Bridges. Also, we got the homegrown man, the hometown talent himself, man. Samuel Vargas is stepping up. In another great fight, he will be taking on Connor Ben for the WBA Continental Welterweight title. Now, that's the one that I'm excited about because Samuel Vargas is a Canadian. Definitely, man. And um, yeah, we got to support our guy over there. Hopefully he does well. He did pretty well against Amir Khan. When he was when he was over there last time, got a few knockdowns, didn't get the victory, but, you know, represented himself very well. And um, definitely not an easy fight for Conor Ben, I don't believe. Um, Sammy's going to he's going to bring a fight to him and and make it rough and tough on him. Amir Khan actually he said that earlier, either this week or um, last week that, um, yeah, Sammy's no joke. And, you know, Conor Ben better not be overlooking him. And I agree with that. I agree, man, because Sammy's always game. Yep, and uh, I think I, I hope he's not overlooking him, but he could potentially be overlooking. Um, he could be potentially overlooking um, Connor uh, Samuel Vargas, and that is going to cause a problem for him. That's going to cause things to go awry, and when the fight gets tough, because we all know that Sammy's a dog, man. He comes, yeah, he's gritty and ready to go. So if you go in there thinking you're going to bomb Sammy out in the first four rounds. Man, you went for a long fight because Sammy got a a lot. Yeah, man. Come on, man. And he could take some shots. Yeah, and Conor Ben, his last fight against Formella, he was hittable, man. He was he was definitely hittable. He was he looked good, but I think he got hit a little too much in his last fight. Um, for my liking. But you know, hopefully Sammy could take advantage of those those holes if they're presented to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. We almost close. We close, people. We close, man. We almost got Amanda on the show, man. And I'm excited. I'm excited to know what her, what she got going on. Yeah, for sure, man. What she got going on? They call it AG, so I'm gonna call it AG too. Yeah, call- <laughs> I'm gonna call it AG too. <laughs> you like don't, don't want to go over your head, but yo, the next fights that we want to definitely bring to you that we want to talk about is the um um pardon, pardon, pardon. The fight that's happening at the Osagi Casino in in Tulsa, Oklahoma. USA, Latin America, Canal Sports. That is ESPN Plus, headlined by Joe Smith Jr., taking on Maxim Veloz. He is 45 and 3. And this is for the vacant WBO World Light Heavyweight title. This title was held by the one and only crusher, Sergey Kovalev. Are you excited for this fight, Joe Smith Jr.? Um, I can't say I'm like overly excited. I mean, you know, I, he's just kind of a, I don't know. He's just kind of a fighter that's there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, he's getting his opportunity at a world title. So, I mean, I can't blame him for jumping on it, but I'm more looking forward to the undercard because um, we have um, F.A. Ajagba fighting yeah. and, and Jared Anderson, man. So I think those two fights are really what I'm going to watch the fight, try and watch the fight for. Out of the whole thing, man. Out of the I'm, whole thing, man. Listen, we're going to get into this card after we talk, you know what I'm saying, to AG great right now. Uh, we about to get it. We, we She in the building. So we, we're not going to take no more time. You know what I'm saying? We just going to get right to it and see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know what to do, brother. Yeah, man. So our guest is ready. We're going to bring her on, man. She's a decorated amateur. She's won Brampton Cup, gold gloves, bronze gloves, three-time national champion. And she's now 4-0 as a professional, as a super bantamweight, man. And you can see her in action April 23rd out in Vancouver. Uh, she's going to be on that Three Lions card. That that card is looking good. And she was added to it. And yeah, man, we have the one and only Amanda Gale joining us here on the way in. How are you doing? Hello. I'm well. How are you? Uh, we're doing pretty good. Thank you for staying up past your bedtime. Oh, I, I'm going to be on my second dream right now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little different. Lo- I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, man. But we appreciate it, though. No problem. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Beautiful. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Right. Sorry, Francis. No, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So just um, let some of our listeners and viewers get to know you a little bit better. Um, Just give us a little bit of your background, Um, where you're from, where your family's from, and uh, how you got started in boxing. 
Sure. So I am from uh, Mississauga. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay, I'm born and here. raised. I've been here all my life, um, 31 years. Uh, I started boxing when I was uh, 16. And how I got into it was through uh, martial arts. So I actually started karate when I was five. And uh, I received my uh, first degree black belt at the age of 11. And then at the age of 14, got my second degree. And then I just took a, a massive liking to boxing throughout my martial arts training. My coach is very boxing oriented. So um, because I took a massive liking to it, I started to just focus uh, more in on boxing a little bit every day. And then I um, actually wanted to have my first match when I was 14, but my coach made me like specifically train in boxing without kicking and all that stuff for two years. And then I had my first match when I was um, 16 years old. So my first amateur bout was um, when I was 16 and I actually um, knocked the girl out in like 28 seconds. What? Oh. Yeah. So she got up and she actually came to my corner instead of going to hers. Um, so that was definitely one to remember. And I trained and competed in, in amateur boxing from the age of uh, 16 to um, just shy of almost 30. So 29. So about 13, 14 years. Okay. And what gym did you um, train out of? So I trained in, I, I trained in boxing in the same gym that I started martial arts when I was five. So um, if you want to talk about loyalty and remaining true to your team, I've been under uh, my coach's wing since the age of five years old. And I've been out of all Canadian martial arts since I was five. And that's where I learned not only to um, box, but I actually know how to fight. I know how to kick. I know how to do it. Uh, elbows, knees, uh, jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I have my blue belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I mean, if I wanted to take my competitive level to MMA, I definitely could, but uh, I'm all about boxing. I loved boxing, um, you know, from from when I was like eight, nine, and then I just you know started to focus a lot more on it and compete in it when I was 16. So that's my passion, and that's what I choose to uh, take on my professional career in now. I love it. I love it. Now, yeah. now, Amanda, I'm Francis, by the way. Um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Now I, I'm I'm known as the one as the crazy one on the show. You know, I say come with <laughs> crazy energy. So I, I'm gonna let you know if you don't feel like answering no question, you don't gotta answer. But this is the way in, and we are gonna try to weigh in to see. You know, what I'm saying uh, on your career right now. So yeah, I got a few questions to ask you. From the age of nine, sure. who was that fighter or fight that got you into loving boxing? Well. Like I, at that point in time, I didn't really look to anybody just yet. Um, when I started competing, I definitely had some, um, idols in, in, in the sport and women's boxing, but I looked to my coach. I mean, his passion was passed down to me. So Vito, who runs all Canadian martial arts Academy, that's where, where I was first introduced, um, to boxing. And that's where, um, you know, I, I, I learned everything that I know. Um, it wasn't till, you know, I started training and competing as an amateur. Sorry, I started competing as an amateur that um, I got more serious. I would say I became like more serious and like at an elite competitive level at the age of 17, 18. And then that's when I I, I looked up to certain um, fighters. Um, one of them, and my, once again, it was passed on knowledge from my coach. He made me watch uh, Shadow Boxer and uh, Lucille Rikers in it. She's It's a documentary about her and her training. And I, I idolized her from that point on. Um, nice. I still do. Um, so she was, you know, someone that I first idolized in, in the boxing world. Um, but like I said, I was first introduced um, to it by my coach. I... I I was taught everything I know from him. And then as I became in a more competitive um, level and an elite level of boxing, then I, I looked to someone like Lucille Riker. And then to be honest with you, I looked up to the people I was sparring with because at the end of the day, they were elevating my game. Um, and kicking your butt along the way too. Absolutely. I was just going to say, <laughs> I was going to say yeah. to you, sometimes it was bad because you had such a profound respect for them that you were looking at them and admiring them instead of, kicking ass in there you know so you know a couple of times my coach would ask me like do you want to sit there and admire her? are you gonna fucking fight her you gonna fight her? no you um, got the way you good so but but they say you are who you hang around 
Um, mm. So I made sure to associate myself with um, the greats. You know, I was at 17, the age of 16, I was sparring with pros, 17 pros. Um, and I definitely would say that it totally elevated my game um, from the beginning and created a foundation that I forever can build upon, a strong one, um, just because of, you know, you are who you hang out with. And I was hanging out with, um, at that po that point, I mean, 12 years ago, um, even up until about eight years ago, they were the best. Um, I was the young one coming up. And so I, I thrived um, just, just being around them, working with them, getting my ass handed to them, making us uh, buy them, sorry, and then making adjustments to grow and develop. Um, um, I was sparring, I was sparring with uh, my cousin Olga, um, you know, at the time she was a professional, um, you know, at the, at the highlight of her career. I hold, was on hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> did, did you say Olga? Yes. Um, are we, Olga Heron? Yes, yes. So my, my, my yes, so my mom okay. and her mom are first cousins. My grandmother and her grandmother are sis sisters. So that's how we're cousins. Lovely, right. lovely. So um, the blood. So yes, yeah, so I was I was moving around with her at the you know young age of seventeen, and then I started uh, sparring with uh, Sandy Tascures, and uh, at the age of eighteen, and I was sparring with her a lot, and uh, you know I give credit credit to them; they're the pioneers of the sport, and um, you know they gave me a great foundation when it comes to being in the ring, and and sparring, um, technical. Uh, technically, um, the skill that I have, um, all the assets that I bring into the ring, I have to give full credit to my coach. And then obviously my heart, because you can't teach that. Um, you definitely born, can't teach yeah, that. Cool. I was born with that. So the two, the, 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 the skill that he's given me and the heart that I was born with, I mean, um, can't beat it. It's meant for destruction. It just can't yeah. beat it. I love it. We got some questions from the people that we just want to, um, just ask you real quick before we switch gears to another question. Uh, Life no has a question that says, what would you say is the highlight of your career to date? So as a, as a professional, I would have yes. to say uh, my last fight, which unfortunately was about 14 months ago due to COVID, but I am super, super excited to be jumping back in in two weeks and very fortunate because there are still people waiting to do the same. So totally grateful to be um, added to the Three Lions promotion cards. Thank to uh, my my promoter Lee Baxter, he was he's been working his butt off to get me on that card. Um, the highlight of my professional career absolutely was the last fight, January twenty eighth, against uh, Shelly Barnett. Um, it was eight rounds, and then it was eight rounds of me showcasing, um, you know, everything about me. You know, all my characteristics, how I like to attack the body, uh, switch levels. Um, my head movement and and just my speed and the fact that you know people think that you know I wasn't able or wasn't going to be able to carry that um, non-stop uh, you know punch count yeah from what from one to eight but you know something about me is I get better as the rounds go further um, so that was the biggest uh, happiest moment for me when I switched right. over from amateur to um, professional is that I could not wait for the rounds to go from four um, to six to eight. So um, hold on a second, though. You jump, you you jump from, you jump from four to eight. You skip six, right? So that was getting through. Getting through eight was was a bonus. Was was like was a victory and getting the win too, right? Uh, but your this fight coming up is another four rounder. I come yes. with another so, eight rounder. So because the. Um, the opponent that I am fighting, um, it's her professional boxing debut. So the commission wouldn't pass anything more than four because of mm -hmm. the boxing experience that she has. However, she does have ring experience. She's fought in MMA and uh, kickboxing. So, um, yeah, that's just the commission ruling. I, I hoped it was going to be another eight. I mean, at the end of the day, we get paid more money for the more rounds that we fight. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I... That I would love it to go all eight rounds, but if it does, I mean, I do love it. I just, I wanted to see a little bit um, more more money. But at the same time, like I said, I have to be grateful that I'm in a situation that I'm stepping in the ring in a couple of weeks where other fighters um, still haven't uh, been able to have that blessing. So 
you know, we uh, we took the fight. Like I said, Lee Baxter has been working really, really hard to get me in. We want to get the ball rolling um, so that way my next fight can be in the States um, on a, a Lou DiBella card. Um, so, uh, we got the fight and, and we gotta, you know, be happy about that. And, and comes April 23rd, four rounds, eight rounds, six rounds. It ain't going to matter. I'm going to come out. Punch count's going to be heavy from start to finish. And, uh, that's it. I just got to do my, do my work, do my, put it all together, execute, you know, everything I've been working on. It's been a long 14 months. Uh, the one thing that has remained consistent for me was training. I trained the whole 14 months. Um, okay. So, you know, and I just use the time off um, to just, you know, enjoy the training and not, you know, make it, you know, feel like it's, it's a job because as a professional, it is your job. It was, it was something that I looked to forward to, to doing every day, every um, day, because it was an outlet. I mean, there's people that have, you know, haven't been fortunate enough to go to gyms. I had, I have been just because I manage the gym. I have the keys so I can go in on my own time and, Um, I just, I I looked at everything from a blessing, you know, people aren't able to do certain things. And I was yes. just that, that approach in itself is so positive and you just, you appreciate, um, so much more little things that you may have taken for granted comes, you know, a year back, you know, uh, 12 months ago, 13 months ago. So I did remain consistent with training and then, uh, I've been kind of, uh, what's the word, putting it all together and, 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 and making it fight camp for the past, uh, I would say, you know, 12 weeks since January, because I knew, you know, I hope that things were going to open up. So I said, you know what, let's make sure I'm ready. So, uh, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm excited. And I can't wait. Love it. So Love- go- going back to that question. Yeah. The highlight of my career was, uh, the fight against Shelly, uh, kudos to her. Um, she is one tough girl that uh was relentless in the sense of just kept coming forward no matter what i fed to her so respect on that on that part um looking back at the fight and uh yeah so far from my professional career that's the highlight and i i look to uh many more i look to talk about many more highlights some belts some strap seasons so we can can reminisce about that down the road yeah for sure just want to get to one question before i get to mine we missed one um who is your pound for pound number one i guess you could say say for the women's side and you could say one for the men if you want who's your pound for pound number one fighter so pound for pound for the for the men so i so i have this discussion with a couple people when i when i I get asked questions about looking up to people or considering people pound for pound i don't segregate them based on their their gender right I, i look at you know I look at the qualities that I respect yeah, man, about I, the fighter. I, I, somebody. Yeah, we've been saying right, that. So too, yeah. <laughs> um, I I lean. I'm not going to say that I lean more towards the males. I'm just I, the the type of fighter I am. I can right. uh, very well relate to uh, Canelo's uh, Canelo's uh, punch style and the okay. way he fights. Um, and I believe that is because the way my coach trains me is very similar to you know the characteristics he brings to the ring so there's there there's huge similarities so for me i idolize him because i want there's things that i can totally see myself implementing in my game without drastically changing it i mean you can watch all the all these fighters and want to put this in there and that in there but if they don't kind of click in with your game it's going to be very hard to incorporate it so um canelo is for me is, is someone that I idolize. I definitely consider him the pound for pound best. Um, you know, with, with him, it doesn't matter what weight class he goes into, he destroys. So he has my, he has my utmost respect for that. And I share a, a, a similar quality, um, you know, uh, as him with the weight classes. I mean, as an amateur, I fought at 130, 125, 118 and 112. And I dominated, I have, uh, uh four ringside, uh, world titles. I went to ringside, uh, you know, six times I should have had six belts, but the last two times I got wrongfully robbed, but not saying that to be a sore loser. I just got wrongfully robbed to the point where one of them, they raised my hand and then put it down and raised the other one. But, um, anyways, I got four ringside title belts like Pacquiao and Canelo at four, at four different weight categories. So, um, when, when we call when we say pound for pound, I definitely want to see you winning at, you know, 
three three different weight classes that are in close proximity to where you fight at. And and for me, Canelo's the man. You you put anyone in front of him, and 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 he's not just you know winning by a, you know a close decision. He's he's destroying. He's totally dominating. And uh, yeah. He's, right, man. My, he's, what... he's my guy. Let's not segregate, like I said. Yeah. Let's not segregate, but that's the guy that I look up to. 105 yeah. Yeah. mile per hour fastball down the middle. Let's go. Clarissa Shields. Yes. Katie Taylor. Mm-hmm. Jessica McCaskill. Mm-hmm. And can't forget her. Amanda Serrano. Okay. Who's number one to you? Give me get list them for me if you can. No particular order, but if you can, that'd be amazing. Yeah, no problem. Um, I would say Katie Taylor because of her her decorative amateur background. You're talking, you know, hundreds of fights, and I think Clarissa Shields gave herself the title of quote a little too premature. Um, she has less competition because the weight class is higher. So if I were to rank them, I would say Katie Taylor first. And then I would go um, Amanda Serrano, Clarissa Shields, and McCastle. Beautiful. 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 It would answer that question right there. So um, we understand that the division, first of all, any troubles? Did you? How was it coming up in, in, in Canadian in, in, uh, boxing, Ontario, um, for mm -hmm. you? And, and talk about a little bit of the, the, the highs and the lows for those female fighters who are looking to, you know what I'm saying, get into boxing, but are not sure about the, the pitfalls and the, and, and, and the mountaintops. Um, so, you know, this question comes up a lot on a, a lot of podcasts about, you know, um, my amateur career and um, I guess my um, journey and how it's been. And I, because I've moved forward and on, and I'm now a professional and I do want any growing up girl or, or female to get into the sport of boxing because of all the benefits it has um, to, you know, a person's um, self-esteem, confidence, um, you know, everything that it, it, it provides. I don't like mentioning the journey that I've had because I don't want to shy anyone away from, you know, pursuing that. And I don't want to negatively turn them away. Um, but they should know that with any elite competition, there's always politics in sport. There's no way of getting around it. Um, my amateur career, Boxing Ontario. So you always start with Boxing Ontario because that's the province that you reside in and, and that's the governing body. Uh, they treated me um, great. I never had any problems with them. I actually, when I uh, retired as a um, amateur. I thanked the uh, executive director because I was uh, working with him for a long time. I've never had any problems with Boxing Ontario. They stood behind me, supported me um, on a, a provincial level. Uh, the fun and games and the politics came into play at a national level. Um, and it, it it's still happening today. Um, and it's just, um, you know, un unfairness with uh, regards to giving the athlete full opportunity fair opportunity to go out, compete, and um, they've earned that right. But there were a lot of um, barriers that would take that right away. And it had nothing to do with losses in the ring. It had to do with so many outside factors that had nothing to do with your performance in the ring. Uh, whether you, like, basically you would win and you would, you would still be taking away an opportunity um, to move forth because of decisions that were made outside that ring. Um, so, I mean, that, that's the most general way I'll talk, I'll, I'll, I'll speak mm -hmm. about it without, you know, like I said, turning and getting into detail, but the reason why I did, uh, um, move, move into a, a professional career when I did was because 2018, I won the nationals for the third time and I became a team Canada member. Right. And that was in April. And in November of that year, there were the worlds. And the good, the, the great thing about the worlds and, and female boxing and being at a 118 weight class is that it was included. It wasn't an Olympic weight class, but at the world level, it was included. So it was right. April and um, worlds were, you know, five months away. So my, my, my coach said to me, Amanda, you've been an amateur fighter for 12, 13 years. You waited, you know, through um, two Olympic cycles. What's another five months, you know, go to the worlds, you know, 
try to, you know, get on the podium and it'll help market your professional career because that was always the plan. You know, um, when you, when you turn a professional it'll help market you that much better. Okay. What's another five months, you know, after 12, 13 years of competing, it's really nothing. It's around the corner. So we waited. Um, I did everything asked of me. There was a couple training camps I attended. One of them was in Spain, totally paid out of my own pocket. Um, it was about three thousand dollars. We were there for ten days. Wow! Um, and then it came time to to attend the worlds in um, in uh, November. Right. And um, there was uh, you had to be given an invitation to attend. So basically, I wasn't presented the invitation because I didn't um, I lacked the international experience or I didn't meet their criteria for that year. What? Now, now, so. The frustrating part about it is if you're given an invitation, right, by somebody because right. you need to you need to meet their qualifications and standards, then you should be you should you should be uh, accommodated by everything being paid for and this and that. Hell you know yeah. I mean? There should right. be a yeah. there should be a give and take. So basically, yeah. if you want, if, 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 if I have to earn an invitation from you, what are you giving me on your side? Not only did I not get invited. But even if I did get invited, I would have to pay my own way. Anyways, the whole, the whole thing anyways. So other than you providing me that slip to represent Canada, that's all you're really doing for me. So the, that was one of the slaps in the face. The second slap in the face was they had nobody better to replace me. So at 118 in 2018 at the Worlds, Canada had no female representative. What? So not only did they no, not stop send playing me, Amanda. Matt, you lying. Yes. So not only did they not send me, but they also didn't have anyone that replaced me because there was nobody better to replace me. In 2018, that year at Nationals, my heaviest competition, I drew, I and this always happens because if I ever want something in life, I have to work twice as hard. I've I've accepted this and wow. it's created it's created great work work ethic in me, let me tell you. Um not, in 2018, when I went to the Nationals, I drew the most decorative um, competitor first. She was uh, on the wow. national team for five years. She was ranked number three in the world um, about, I don't know, uh, 2013. So at the time, it was five years back. Um, and she had probably 150 uh, amateur fights. And at the time, I had 50. Um, I drew her first. So because I drew her first and I beat her, it's not like she was, you know, in the finals with me, I placed first, she placed second. They had intentions of asking her to go to the Worlds to replace me. It was none of that. They basically, Canada um, did not give me an invitation. And in 2018, they sent nobody at 118. So this is the politics where when we refer back to the general statement that I made, there's things outside the ring that I had absolutely no control over. And that was one of them. And listen, I'm sure I'm going to face politics as a professional. But right now, and I've, I've said this before, um, because once I turned professional, I swear it felt like I was out of jail and free. And I just had this yeah. renowned energy and excitement for, for boxing, um, mm. just because I felt like it was just a new beginning, um, totally in my element, because I always brought um, the professional um the professional characteristics I had in the amateur game. And I think that's why I did so well. Yeah. But as a professional, I'm more in my element. Like I love, yeah. I, 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 I'm not, you know, one to run and, and play tag and hit and not be hit. I, I love to brawl. So, and you know, I love to attack the body and, and amateurs lack that. Um, most of them. So you're trying so to I, get busy early, by the yes. way. So, I mean, so, <laughs> um, I, I was so happy that I finally turned pro. And like I said, there's mm -hmm. probably going to be politics in, in profession, in, in my professional game, but I'm not there yet. And, and, and until I get there, I'm totally enjoying the ride. I'm yeah. totally in my element and I'm totally enjoying just a, 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 a new, you know, a new journey, a new journey, um, where, you know, it's, it, sometimes it's great not to be known and not to be the decorative amateur that everyone knows about, because, yeah. you know, that, that creates, uh, you know, uh, you know, a stigma to, you know, your name. So it feels good to be fresh, fresh in the fresh meat, if you want to say it.
Session the game. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Listen, yeah. we got a few questions from the people. Because yeah. I mean, then again, thank you very much for your time, man. We appreciate you so much for taking the time out. Also, don't forget you can call the number rolling across the bottom of the screen, 914-205-5532. And you can speak to Amanda directly. That's for sure. Yeah. No messages. You ain't got to hear my voice. You can just hear her voice and <laughs> straight like 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 you want to ask it. Um, because I might, you know, switch one or two words in there. If I want to read it my way. Um, the other thing I want to say is uh, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button, man, and the subscribe button. It does help with the growth and the visibility of the show. It helps just bring guests like Amanda on the show um, so she can tell you about her journey and tell you what's next in her career. Now, the reason why we do this, Amanda, is the same reason why I asked you the question is because there are people who have dealt with Boxing Canada, so to speak. Mm-hmm. They have also dealt with Boxing Ontario. Um, mm-hmm. you know, awareness to the sport so that others don't go through the same pitfalls or seeing how we can adjust, you know what I'm saying, for those coming behind to, to reap the benefits is what we're here for. We're here to mm-hmm. try to build and grow together. It's not about tearing down. Now, if something needs to be torn down, you best believe it's coming down, but something is going up. We ain't going to tear it down, just leave it down. Something is going up that's more of a solid foundation. So that's why we love to do this. Why we, we love boxing. We want to build a boxing in Canada to another level, um, along with everybody else that's doing it, man. We just want to we just want to drive the bus and like for yourself, your career, your fight. We're going to be marketing and promoting and doing everything we can, you know what I'm saying, to get as much uh, views and eyeballs on you as, as possible. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, I say all that to say this. If, if you guys, if you guys tune in uh, April twenty third, it's on pay per view. It's cheap, thirty nine bucks. Have a bunch of people over, and uh, make sure you put in Galley one thousand. Enter the promo code prior to checkout, so I know you're cheering me on. There you go. Oh, there, there we you go. go. We got to do that for sure. All right, let's run these questions real quick. So, um, Derek, as as Zebra, as Fado, man, as Fado. Thank you. I I, yeah, I think I know who that is too. Oh, yeah. do you? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. he, uh, his question was, what are the implications for your fight with Amy? And do you think her kickboxing experience will play a role in the fight since you're an inside fighter? Um, so basically, um, she can kick and I can kick too, but we ain't kicking that day. Um <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm I'm gonna say that she's brave to be taking on uh, for her first fight uh, someone um, that is four and zero and with my uh, amateur experience, um, I take no one lightly. I'm very humble, so I'm uh, coming in there. And you know, at the end of the day, um, I can call her brave now. And on April twenty third, we're gonna find out how skilled she is and how tough she is. Um, so we'll 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 talk about that post fight. Um, like I said, I'm not going to take her lightly. She does have ring work. Um, I mean, if 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 she if she's kicking and has uh, experience kicking, she she's gonna. In order to kick, you got to be at distance. You got to be at a further distance away. So is she gonna like the inside fighting? Is the question. She ain't gonna be able to kick. She can only punch. So uh, I'm not gonna sit here and 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 talk about my tactics just because I'm sure there are plenty of people uh, listening. Um, but I'm, uh, all I can say is I'm not going to take her lightly. She does have ring experience. Um, but it is different when you are kicking, you're at a further range. Um, so she's going to have to find her range. Um, it's her first, uh, professional boxing fight. So that might be complex for her. That might be easy. Um, we'll, we'll tell that day. All I know is I'm, I'm going to call her brave and we're going to see how skill and, uh, tough she is that day. I'm excited. I, 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 I'm excited to show. I'm excited to showcase my skill. I'm more than ready. Um, and uh, taking uh, taking punches uh, precisely on certain areas of the body and the face are way different than taking kicks. I mean, you can block kicks. You can see them from a mile away. A kick doesn't usually land full throttle on your face. you got your elbows blocking, um, mm. your hands up, kind of, uh, what what's the word? Uh, you know, taking a little bit of the punishment prior to it hitting your face so it, it's it's gonna be a little bit um different for her and it might not be i mean i i was uh like i said i came from a martial arts background um so i mean there's no threat for me because i'm totally in my element comes april 23rd you know i can kick i can punch i can do jujitsu i can elbow i can knee but at the end of the day uh, on that night we can only use our hands so uh who's gonna use them better um and who's gonna you know 
make you miss and use their head movement and and you guys just tune in and watch i love I, it. I, I, no, i've never will. been i've never been one to sit and chatter about you know with with my words i've always been been one to just to show it um with well my now hands. The, well i'm mad at the time so, is now. the time is yeah, now you, you can build, talk about it on the way yeah <laughs> yeah you guys you guys yeah. gotta tune in and watch the rest that's yeah. right. that we do the talking we'll do the talking for you you throw the hands don't worry about it we got you um yeah. eric also had another question that says do you consider kickboxing question mark or mma question mark and what weight classes do you think you can make as a professional if i were to consider them uh yes. i would i would fight exactly where i'm fighting now uh between 118 uh to 122 um no heavier than that I'm actually after this fight. I'm gonna be planning on on moving down. Uh, you know, uh, just you know, it, it's been a while, so we're gonna fight this one, and then we're gonna you know work our way down. Um, I would fight the exact same spot that I am. Um, would I consider it? No, because like I said, I've had the ability to consider it um, from the age of uh, you know 14, 15. You know, if I wanted to even start at 10, I had my black belt at 11. So. Uh, earning a black belt in our martial arts play uh, school at ACMA, you got to be, you know, able to kick. You got to be able to box, kickbox, jiu-jitsu, do jiu-jitsu, uh, throw knees and elbows. You got to be able to have all, all of that. So I could have taken on the sport um, a lot sooner if if I wanted to. I'm all in. I'm all in to 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 earn world titles, um, undisputed champ in the professional boxing league. You know, in 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 boxing. Um, Beautiful. So that's my answer to him. Beautiful. Next question. Go ahead, Greg. Next question from Rita Boone. Uh, what are your weaknesses and how do you mentally prepare? Oh, she can't give up the weaknesses. She, she, you know what I'm saying? She can't, she can't <laughs> give it away. If she has any, you know what I mean? Um, you know, come comes fight time. I mean, I feel like the weak the weaknesses aren't really directed to um fighting. Um, I feel like there's there's weaknesses that you know you face every day, um, and how you deal with them is what shapes you to bring that to the ring, and fight, and it, it defines who you are. So um, when it comes to having a weakness, um, you know, uh, with regards to fighting, um, I'm not going to say I'm perfect. There are things to work on, but I'm not going to obviously sit here and disclose that. I mean, uh, right. there's always things I need to improve. But uh, weaknesses outside the ring, um, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I take a lot of things personally. Um, and uh, I care a little bit too much for everybody and everything. And I'm, I'm very, um, very honest. And uh, I just, uh, I like to do uh, real good for people. Like I like to, to do good things for people. And uh, sometimes it's a weakness because... Not that I expect in return, but when certain things, you know, aren't reciprocated in the sense of not right there on the spot, but, you know, months down the road, just on a personal level of, of respect or uh, reciprocation with, um, you know, not even acknowledgement, but feedback on how you're, you know, you're doing right now in your career as a boxer or how you are doing as a person outside the ring. Um, right, I get hurt. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I get hurt because, you know, if it's something like idolizing someone, for example, um, you know, and, uh, you know, putting them up on a pedestal and admiring them yeah. and, you know, and then, you know, their time is past, but now it's your time and just not getting that reciprocation that you gave them when it was their time. Um, that hurts me and that's a weakness. And I just have to learn to not things to not take things personally and, and detach and not be so emotionally, um, connected to people because sometimes, you know, you're just, you know, a person that walks through their life and you may not mean what they mean to you. So I, I would say that's a weakness that I have. Like, I'm just like, I, I just, everything I do and, and this, this connects to uh, what I said about, you know, being, you can't be taught heart, you're born with it. Yeah. Everything I do, I 150% do with my heart. So if it's fighting, it's, I'm 150% all in. If it's being your friend, I'm 150% all in. If it's, um, you know, helping you uh, do something or achieve something, if I can't give you 150% of my help from what it's going to take to get you there, I'll say no right off the bat. I just, I do everything with my heart and, and yeah, sometimes it hurts because you don't get that reciprocated um, back from from the people that 
you know, that you care for and uh, admire or respect. Um, so that that's one of my weaknesses. But um, like I said, I, I feel like it shapes me and defines mm -hmm. me. And there's a certain character in me that I bring to that ring that uh, nobody else has. It's rare. It's rare. Yeah. That's, on, that's, one, that's one reason why I'll never change as much as, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. trying to learn and, and, and mature and, and stuff like that. That's something I don't want to change about me because there, there's not much of that left today. Right. So since this is your first fight, you know, during the whole COVID, um, how many times do you plan to fight this year? If you can. So this is going to get the ball rolling. So okay. I recently signed a promotional contract with uh, Lee Baxter uh, Promotions and Lou DiBella out of New York. Um, it's a, a co-promotion. Co so basically Lee Baxter is going to handle um, keeping me busy and, uh, you know, building my record as well as my experience here locally. And that's, you know, the best part about it is because this is where I'm from and this is where my fan base is. And then Lou, Lou DiBella um, out of New York is going to carry my career to, um, you know, world ranking, um, you know, and, and world title belts. So I'm, I'm blessed. I, I achieved that during COVID. So that was huge that I achieved something during the 12 months that I've been uh, laid off, not actually fighting in the ring. Um, so that was a, a big step for me. That's um, awesome, man, that's huge. Yeah. So um, basically, Shout out I, to I, I yeah, sh shout out to Lou DiBella and Lee Baxter. And basically, I have, you know, the best coach to to train my hands and 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 prepare me for war. And now I have these two gentlemen that are going to carry my career in, in the, the most positive, proper direction where I'm going to get um, the most money and, and you know, a, a long, healthy career um, of lots of wins. Um, and like I said, strap season, lots of belts. Um, so... It. So this is getting the, the ball rolling. So basically the, the plan is, is after this, this fight here, um, I, I'll be fighting uh, on Lou DiBella's uh, second uh, all-women's boxing card. Okay. He's having, uh, he's having one on the 24th all-women's female fight card on April 24th. Right. Um, that's one of three. So he has a, a three of them happening. So I'm supposed to be on his second uh, all women's uh, boxing card. Awesome. Which, uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been great. March has been uh, huge for women's boxing, and uh, um, milestones have definitely presented themselves with women finally getting uh, you know television broadcasting and the attention they deserve. Uh, you know, filling a card uh, up of of you know all women fights. I mean, mm -hmm. so this has been the year for it and then I'm happy to, you know, follow the lead and join, join in on it. Uh, so that's it. So April 23rd, I'm going to be handling business and then uh, we get the ball rolling and snowballing into, I believe that the next fight with Lou will be June. Uh, so. And I heard it's your birthday month too. You fighting in your birthday month, birthday girl. Yeah. yeah so I'm fighting the 23rd and I'm, uh, you know, it's my birthday on the 27th. So, uh, we're gonna we're gonna bring the gift. Like I said, I'm there never given anything in life, so I'm gonna go earn earn the birth <laughs> go earn the birthday cake. You heard the birthday cake. I love it. I love it. Um, Greg, you had, you haven't said. I want to give you an opportunity because I'm a hog, man. I, I'm gonna ask all the questions. No, you know what? I wanted to ask you. So your first three fights were against Mexicans. H yes. How was that experience fighting that tough Mexican style in your first three fights? I know you Why probably welcome it because of your style, but how was it? No. Though? No, it was, it was definitely like, uh, challenging. I mean, my, my, my first fight, um, you know, it was my first time up against a Mexican and, and, and she, uh, you know, put a statement out there that these, these ladies, they come, they come to fight. They don't just come to collect the paycheck. They're coming, you know, um, from that underdog, um, type of, you know, upbringing and, and they come to fight and, 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 and draw blood and, and leave it all yeah. in there. Uh, all three of them were, um, they weren't easy breeze walks in the park. Like, you know, everyone's sitting out there and watching me just, you know, nonstop throw punches and this and that. But let me tell you when someone can, can keep taking a beating <laughs> and even, yeah. even if they're not throwing, you know, as many punches back at you, but they're still throwing and they're throwing hard it's and demoralizing. Yeah, you 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 have to dig deep and you have to dig deep to be able to, you know, continuously, you know, continue punching and yeah. and, and and these girls are they're they're taking it and you're sitting there and you're you're like wow and so 
you know, you you, you finish you the fight. You have to be careful, you... Amanda, so to cut you. you. have to be careful, too, because those are the fights that you'll hurt your hand because they're taking so much punches. That you you run the risk of getting a hand injury in, in those type of fights. No, absolutely. I mean, like all three of them, you know, and then, and then, you know, I knew Shelly was tough, but I didn't really think she was going to be able to endure, you know, a beating the way the Mexicans did because, you know, it's not like, it's one thing to, to headhunt, you know, and, 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 and someone not go down just because they have, you know, a solid jaw. Right. But when you're, when you're, you know, chopping down the tree, you know, and you're digging to the body. And then you're yeah. coming back upstairs and then going back downstairs and go changing levels. And they're still standing. You're like, this is what <laughs> nuts. Yeah. You know? So yeah. So anytime, you know, it's, it's a little bit different. I mean, a lot of males go out to Mexico or fight Mexicans to build their record. Yeah. You know, to get their, their, their W's heightened. Yeah. You gotta get on, their O's up, man. The, the yeah. On, 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 on their box rec. That way, you know, they, they, they get called up for, you know, bigger money and, and, mm. uh, you know, bigger opportunity, you know, that is totally separate. That does not relate to facing a Mexican female. It, it is totally different. It was an insight. Um, yeah. It's, it, it, it's totally different. You're not going to go to Mexico as a female to, 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 to just grant yourself a win. If you're going to Mexico or you're facing a Mexican here, it, you better be ready for, um, a tough, a tough fight. That's for sure. I was at your first fight, man. That was that was a tough fight. Yeah, yeah she she tough. she just yeah she was tough and she just dropped these left hand bombs. She was a, she was a southpaw too, right? Yeah. So that was not only my first that was not only my first pro fight. That was a southpaw. And in my amateur career, um, you know, you, I obviously I have sixty amateur fights. I mean, I've probably faced you know twenty five percent of those southpaws. So. It was, you know, your nerves are up at your first professional fight, and now she's a southpaw and she's Mexican. So it was just, you know, I felt like I was thrown to the lions, but I stepped up. So you you dug deep and got and got got the victory. I want to get back to some Greg. You had a follow up? No, no, go ahead, man. I, I want to dig deep. I want to get into something. Yeah, you can take a sip in the meantime. I, I wanted to get get into something. You you said it's trap season. Um, you are ranked number one in Canada. Yeah. Um, it, it, out of all the women at super bantamweight and, and number 33 in the world out of 147 mm -hmm. uh super bantamweight what is the path what is the plan for the strap so, so the the plan is um you know for me like i said I, i'm planning to go to bantamweight um we're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna we're gonna fight this fight get the ball rolling but I'm I mean, sure. hold on, sorry, hold on. I, the reason why I'm asking, I want to know: is it a certain amount of fights you guys are looking at? Is it four fights? Is it ten fights? Is it seven fights before world title? Like, is there a certain thing that you like? That, that's what I, we're trying to know for the people, so that we can have, you know, I mean, a, a plan so we can follow along. You know, I mean, a, as we're going. So you know, I don't want I don't want to sit here and uh, you know give you uh, false answers. Basically, because of the um, the delay with COVID. Um, this, this step in actually fighting is huge. Just the fact that I'm getting, uh, in the ring and just getting off the ring rust of, of fighting again. Uh, so the plans were for me to do this and then head to the States to fight a, uh, American, uh, comes June. Um, and then I guess we're at, at that point, we're going to sit down and, uh, re, you know, regather and, and discuss that we haven't spoke about that yet. There are some uh, people I have in mind that I would totally uh, fight uh, for a title, um, but that is something that I, you know, need to speak to um, with 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 my team and 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 the people that I would like to fight. You know, they could be large money makers, so you don't want to have it too premature in 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 my career in the sense of with COVID, with the crowd restrictions, um, no spectators. Um, you know, the term was, you know, by Lee Baxter, you know, he said to me, we're going to put those on ice, put those on ice, mm -hmm. you know, save that for, you know, a couple fights down the road, or maybe it's not even about the fights, but just the situation that, that we're presented in at the moment. Right. Um, so when, 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 when he makes the statement and says, you know, keep that on ice, we'll keep that on ice. Basically, let's put that in our back pocket. And, and let's plan for that and, and we will definitely approach it, but let's approach it at a time where we can reap the rewards and benefit from, you know, it the most, whether, you know, it is having to do with, 
with money um right. you know location is there going to be a crowd how can we generate you know you know you uh earning the most uh financial gain from right. you facing that person so i don't want to sit here and uh it, it would be very disrespectful of me to uh, uh state my plans because i may have that in my head but I, as a someone that's still um you know uh young in, young in, in your professional career. game yeah, yeah. yeah it, it wouldn't be right it would be something that i would need guidance towards and uh you know and 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 sit down with lee and lou and make sure that it is the best uh interest like it is in the best interest for me to to uh head you know in that direction um so you know i i want to stay you know um you know current in in the next couple months don't jump the gun uh too forward and and just let you know the intentions are to to fight april 23rd and then move on to um you know a u.s opponent um in june and and then we'll probably regather and say hey this is what's next uh you had asked me how many fights i plan to get this year yes because i have you know two from april to june pretty much aligned or, or planned for right. i'm hoping at least three to four uh, yep. i don't think that that's ho like i i don't think that's uh you know setting the bar um you know you know too high that i'm dreaming i think that's realistic three to four is uh realistic by december beautiful see greg she's me to train we ain't gonna get nothing by her she already yeah. prepped and ready to go we're gonna get her up out of here we're gonna ask her just a few more questions and then we're gonna go yeah. um because I think again, some ladies this weekend that might be in her future though Hey, I, hey, I'm just hey, saying. Hey, I'm just hey, saying. Hey, yeah, that was, was already. That, actually, I'm just saying. On, Lee? You supposed to been on it, man. I'm gonna call yeah. Lee. Early. I'm gonna call you, Lee. Right now. You, no, you, you, yeah, you, you reminded you reminded me. Actually, Lee is in. Uh, he's there. He's in uh, UK. Sammy Vargas, uh, my teammate. Yeah. He's uh, fighting against uh, Ben on uh, yeah, Friday. Yeah, Ben. Yeah, that's right. So Lee's there, and Lee actually texted me and told me about uh, these two females that are fighting for a world title on that same card. Uh huh. And uh, I I told him I said. Uh, Actually, I was running and I said, I had a laugh with him. I, I, I messaged him. I said, I voice noted him as I'm running. And I said, forgive me. I'm not, you know, being cocky or whatever. I said, I'm, I'm reflecting on my run and I must share with you. You don't need to put these girls on ice. I said, I could take them both at the same time right there, now. There we so go. I told them. I love it. And, and he laughed and he said, uh, he said, we're going to, we're going to put the pressure out there. So uh, let's just get through April 23rd and then we'll, we'll look it. to what's planned in the future. Listen, man, li listen, you're going to make me throw my headphone across. The I've Listen, since we've been doing this show, I've been <laughs> trying to get this, that energy, man. That I'll beat them both on the same night. That's the yeah. <laughs> You're going to make me wake up everybody. I'm Listen, man. Yo, I, Amanda? I'll do, I'll do <laughs> Shark's Tank. I'll do Shark's Tank sparring, fighting. Give me one of them for six and another one of them fresh for the other six. Jesus, yeah, that, that. that's, that. an yeah. that's, an that's another thing that... Um, that uh you know i brought an element um that i brought to the amateur game that i people weren't able to see it much because of the only the four rounds of two minutes i mean you can hold your breath and deep sea dive for four you know for two minutes for only four rounds that's why i like the the six and eights um from from 18 years old when i um became an elite level amateur i was putting in 10 to 12 rounds i was doing 10 rounds three times a week um you know you know I, I just, I love being tested and, you know, my coach says, you know, you don't start counting until you get tired. You know, you don't start counting what round we're at until you're starting to feel a little tired. So one round one really starts at round five for me. You know what I mean? Wow. Um, you're in that good I, of a shape. What, what type of, what type of workout do they have you doing right now? What type of, uh, what type of, are you doing long runs? Are you doing short sprints? What type of conditioning work are you doing right now? Or a little bit, a little bit of both, a little bit of both. I'm doing uh, strength and power. So I'm doing weights twice a week. Um, and then I'm doing a, a lactic acid uh, uh, session, mm -hmm. which is like basically you're cursing the entire time because your <laughs> legs and core is burning and you just, you know, can't wait till the timer beeps off because, you know, everything is hurts. And then I'm doing a, a, uh, NRG circuit, which basically is a uh, high intensity, um, you know, high intensity, uh, short, you know, 40 second bursts of certain activities at a high in intense level. Um, I'm doing that, uh, tw and sprints. 
So I got a mix of everything. And then I'm training, hitting the, you know, hitting pads with coach, bag. Um, yeah, I got I this it. week this week to finish up. And next week's one hard, last hard week to put in. And then it's uh, taper downtime. Yeah, I can't wait for for everything to open back up so we can get in camp and you know what I'm saying and, and see you working and, and, and put some content and some footage out there. It would be amazing um what we can do. One of the names that I, I, I like is Melissa Odessa Parker. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think she's a part of Lou Debella, but I could be mistaken. No, she's not with him, Beautiful. but she is from she is from the States. Yes, I know yeah. I, I've I've spoken to her a few times. That's a fight. Yeah. I like her name, her name's come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She tough. She tough, but I, but you tough too. But you tough too. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm Absolutely. Canadian. Yeah, I, I like yeah. Melissa, but I'm Canadian. I can, I can I can see that that fight happening. Uh like soon, not in the forecast uh down but the road, enough. but more more sooner, yeah, more sooner than more later sooner for than sure. Later, yeah. and you guys yeah. are both four and oh too, by the way. Yeah, got the same record, both four and oh. So uh that would be a good fight, uh good fight to happen. Now I'm gonna get into my my, my world famous questions before we get world you out of here. Francis questions. These yeah. are the questions that, you know what I mean? It's going to transcend boxing. Just listen up. If you hear anybody with it, they're stealing. But that's not that's a story for another day. Um, First question I want to ask you is when you are running, when you're doing your conditioning work in the gym or on the road, what type of music are you listening to? Are you guys ready for an answer you've never heard before? <laughs> Let me have it. <laughs> All right. So when I when I'm running, um. When I'm running, I'm listening to Andrea Bocelli and Celine Dion. I'm listening to Boys to Men. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. And I'm listening to, uh, uh, what's her name? I'm listening to, um, Come on. why is her name not coming right now? <laughs> A Star is Born. What's her name? Bradley Cooper and oh um Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. There you go, Lady Gaga. My there girl, you go. Lady Gaga. So <laughs> so be, um so I I uh, work in a mar- in, in 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 my martial arts school that that I I began training karate and at five right so yeah. I I teach martial arts I teach classes I mean we've been teaching on Zoom for the past year and a bit but. Um, at the dojo, it, it's high energy. You got the music blasting during warm up. It's like last call at a bar. Wow. Four, four o'clock to eight o'clock. It's nonstop. Four, you know, classes back to back. It's loud. You know, there's there's hectic chaos. I I I I I compare it to like I said, last call at a bar. At a bar, yeah. Uh, for four mm-hmm. hours straight. Dang. Um. So I I don't like to have constant you know noise and chaos. Um you know, all the time. So when I'm, when I'm running, um, you know, there's days where I'll listen to, you know, Spanish reggaeton and, and Romeo Santos and bachata. And then there's days more so the days I'm listening to Celine Dion, Andrea Bocelli, Lady Gaga and slow music. So hold on, uh, you you don't got no annual or no bad bunny, your playlist. What's going on? I, I do. I do. I do. Um, but I mean, Everybody knows it's my playlist when a slow <laughs> song comes on and you're yeah. in the middle of a hard workout. Like I'm on, I'm hitting the bag and I'm on round eight and it, it just ignites this fire in me. All you um, hear is one like a dream. Oh yeah. Through. And I, I love it. I love it. I'll start, I'll start singing. I mean, if you can hit the bag and you can breathe and you can sing along to a tune like that, your conditioning is at an all time Hot yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, no, my co- my coach, he, it it was funny. He said it from from uh, you know like years back. I remember just like being young, and and he was listening to Elvis Presley while he was working out, and uh, he he made the best statement and comment, and he said, "If you can train listening to slow music at a high high pace, imagine what you can do to fast music." And it you know it totally made so much sense. Right. Um, but you know, I'm, uh, I don't know, just listening to that music, it, it touches, you know, here and then you're exerting that into the bag and it just, it, it ignites a fire in me. I can't explain it. I love it. The next but part, you, you, you know, Amanda Galley's in the gym when, uh, when Andrea Bocelli's on full blast, <laughs> you know, she in the gym, you don't got to question it. The yeah. second part of the question I wanted to ask you is, um, does that music change pre-fight before you walk out of the locker room? before your ring walk music so the the yeah so the past four fights i'll be honest there hasn't been any uh 
I, I there hasn't been any music. I wow. I don't I don't put my headphones on. Um, nothing. I just uh, the only music I hear is my walkout tune. Um, and the reason is is because I mean it it it's been it it hasn't been smooth back there. It's been really chaotic, and you just need to be you need to be totally aware of what's going on. Uh, my last fight I was aired on TV. Um, so, you know, we had to be in line with when I was, uh, told to go up. Um, and there was a lot of confusion. First they said, you know, take off your gloves. You still have, you know, so much time. And then next thing you know, it's like, get your gloves on. You're going out there right now. Um, and the area of which we were warming up in was very small. So if, if I don't know, I, I don't want to have headphones on and, and you, be distracted. I kind of want to be able to observe everything that's going on. Um, that way, you know, I ensure that I'm ready. Um, yeah. you, you know, know if, you got, if you got, if you got headphones on, you're blocking all that out and, and then you're setting yourself up for surprises. So uh, I'll have to admit past four professional fights, there's been absolutely no music, uh, pre fight. Um, the only music that there's been is, uh, walking out to the ring and then the whole entire time, while I'm fighting, listening to my coach's command. I love um, it. That's all I hear. I don't, I don't hear the audience anymore. I just hear, you know, what, well, he, Amanda, what he tells me. I tell you what, it sounds like boxing. And I'm glad that you're focused, prepared, because that's the best way you can protect yourself. Boxing is an unforgiving sport. Not only is it the hurt business in the ring, but in my personal opinion, it's the hurt business outside the ring if your business ain't straight. Yeah, you gotta be well, you gotta be totally aware at all your times. Head. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be totally aware at all times. Absolutely. My final question, my, my, my final question is what is your pre-fight meal and what is your post-fight guilty pleasure? Like I got to I got to have it when I get out the ring. All right, perfect. So uh pre-fight meal is uh I, I like to still, you know, eat clean. So I obviously I'm in fight camp, I've been dieting this whole time. So pre-fight, you don't want to eat anything that you're not accustomed to training and that's been in your entire camp because you're just setting yourself up to, you know, feel sick or feel something that you're not used to feeling. So I keep it clean. I stay actually on the same uh, regimen as I, I would, you know, uh, leading up to the fight in camp. Uh, eggs and omelet. Um, but, you know, I'll add carbs. So I'll have eggs and omelet and I'll, you know, have oatmeal. It, it's just it's a it's a bigger meal than in fight camp but it's all the same foods if that makes sense how much time so, how, how long before the fight do you leave that space to have um, a I'll, I'll probably have a meal four hours before and then uh you know a snack if i if i feel hungry i'll have a like a little snack an apple or something two hours before but yeah so the the meals this like the same foods that i was eating leading up to to you know to the fight in training yeah. camp an omelet um, I, I love, uh, oatmeal and, uh, I'll add some nuts in there, which I usually, you know, and some fruit and it, you know, like I'll have the oatmeal first, you know, right after the weigh-in and stuff. And then I'll have the omelet closer to, you know, like four hours out of the fight. And I always love sweet potato fries with the omelet and, uh, I'll eat a slice of toast, like, you know, which, um, you know, a little bit more carbs than fight camp. And then uh, post fight is all about carbs, baby. Post fight <laughs> is ca carb loading hard. Um, for me, definitely pizza. Uh, Why is that number one? All boxes. All boxes say number pizza one, or wing. It, pizza it's or wing. Probably it's I, I. It's probably Italian boxers because I cannot justify after a fight going to a restaurant and eating pasta when nobody can make it better than my mother. So I'll wait till I get home to have that. <laughs> so post fight, I like to have pizza. Um, and then, you know, when we come home and, you know, homemade lasagna or pasta, yeah, I'll definitely the real indulge deal. in that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, post fight is definitely pizza. And uh, I have this thing with sweet potato fries and pre fight and post fight. So it would be pizza with sweet potato fries. And Love. yeah, and no car ca ca carb hard. And yeah, you know what? I'll have, uh, yeah, definitely a sweet tooth. Um, I'll have, uh, what do I like? Uh, what do I usually like? Uh, so past couple of fights that, you know, um, have been in Niagara, I fought as a professional there um, 
a year and a half ago, I went to an all you can eat buffet. That way I can have as much as everything I wanted. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, pie, I love p- apple, apple crumble with ice cream. That would be a, a post fight treat for sure. I love it. I love it. Now, Amanda, man, I want to thank you so very much. Um, I, personally, cause Greg is going to, you know, give his, I want to say thank you very much for myself. Um, so, so very confident. Um, uh, such a savage man i love it this type of this type of energy I, I want my fighters to have grit everybody want their fighters to be buttoned up now nah, man i want my fighter to have grit man you look at me too hard man i might have to slap you from across the table man like, let's go down like that's the type of energy they got to have for me so i appreciate you i love i'm supporting you no doubt a thank you guys a- thank you G. yes ag go on my instagram page and get yourself an ag shirt Inbox okay, we gotta get some of those then. And, yeah. And sure. tune in to the weigh in continuously Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays at 10 p.m. Even Love though it. I'm on even though I'm on my second dream, I'll try to, you know, after <laughs> yeah, the fight, we post fight, it. tune in. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but Go I ahead. thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure, man. It was a pleasure having you on. Thank you for staying up past your bedtime. Yeah, and, totally. Um, now I sure. honestly I think I'm gonna have to like go watch some TV and kind of like chill right now because I'm like amped. Hey, Amanda, there. Amanda, before you go, real quick, before you go. Yes, yes. Do you see anybody, in your opinion, beating Canelo Alvarez? That's my first question. Hold on, before you answer. My second question is, Terrence Crawford or Earl Spence, who do you have? You answer the first one. First one. No, I don't see anybody be- be- uh, beating Canelo. Not, not even now. Jamal, not even Billy Joe, not Jamal, not Caleb, nobody. No. Dang. No. <laughs> he is at his, his prime. And uh, you put Money Mayweather in front of him right now. I'll tell you he'll beat him. Right okay, now good night, too. Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. No, hold on, hold on. And, uh, and, and uh, Spence? Errol, Errol Spence and Crawford. I say Crawford. Oh my, yeah, definitely. Good night. Oh, oh that, that. <laughs> I say Crawford. Okay. You got Crawford. Oh man. All right, all right, I'm still a fan nonetheless. This is a big, big Spence fan. I'm a huge Spence fan. Huge. Yeah. Just, Massive. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep in mind not, not to bring up the layoff, but you gotta keep in mind, uh, you know, Spence's layoff number one, and and the the people that Crawford's uh what? fought in relation oh, to yeah. Spence. Give me uh, seriously, Amanda. <laughs> We're gonna, uh, you, Amanda, we, you know what? We're gonna do this another time. Man, are you serious? His, you talking about Buzz Crawford's resume at forty seven? Yeah. You talk. Are you comparing? Errol Spence's resume to Bud Crawford's resume at 147. I don't know. What I'm trying to say is the last <laughs> fight that I seen Crawford fight and the last fight I seen Errol Spence fight, he, he fought a broken man against each other. Amanda, and... he fought a broken man. He fought. Kel Brook is a broken man. Okay, Danny the Garcia fight before is not that. a broken man. Or the fight before that? Who are we talking about? Green Machine? Me machine, yeah, I think it was me machine. Like, you know what, Amanda? We're gonna do this. I love when people talk boxing because I can get into you know <laughs> we get into the boxing talk. We'll do this all night. So I'm gonna end it right here. I appreciate you so much. I can't wait to tune into your fight. Paper Thank you guys. April 23rd, three April lines promotion is gonna be out there in Vancouver. Let me give you the exact location. Excuse me, it's gonna be at Griffin Studio in Vancouver, man. A G, go to her Instagram page, grab some merch, tell her that. You following from the way in. We appreciate you, Amanda. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you, you guys so much. You Any too. Blessings. Well, Thanks. we'll touch base again, and I, I look forward to tuning in and being on your show again, guys. Love it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. All right. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. We got Amanda Gally on the show, man. Oh, yeah, man. I'm great talking to her, it. man. I, I was actually at her first professional fight, man. She ain't lying about those Mexicans, man. Those now you Mexicans can't prepare for Mexican style. Yeah, man. You can't prepare. It's hard to prepare for Mexican. Very hard, yeah. It's not. It's not an easy thing. So, um, shout out to her for getting three Mexicans in her first three fights. First three fights, man. I mean, she prepared like she prepared. She. I mean, you can't prepare. So anything coming after that is gonna. And then she fought Shelly Burnett, who took her eight rounds. So, not only she fought three Mexican, then she got her first eight rounder, and the girl went eight rounds with her. So. I mean, she's getting all the tests that she needs, and um, I'm looking that's forward. I was gonna say that that's what you need at this point, man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to all the performances that um she's gonna be putting forth, man. Oh man, we 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 got deep into the boxing talk. We all forgot about the other things that we wanted to talk about. But that's okay, man. We'll be back Friday, man, because we're gonna do all of our um pre-fight predictions. 
we're gonna do our, our betting segment that we do. Hopefully, Rafi Ramirez is is gonna um yeah, we're Rafi, man. Rafi been the last, me last few weeks, man. Yeah, Rafi been duck duck. Talking me the last few weeks. We know he's gonna be he's gonna be there this week, man. Cause a lot of big fights. So yeah, Rafi, a lot of my, he's probably busy, man. Shout out to Rafi Ramirez, shout out to Life Lessons, shout out to Mariana. I don't want to butcher your last name. Digalio, Digalo, Digalo. Good, good enough for me, man. I don't think I could have pronounced that, my apologies if I if I mispronounce your name. Um, shout out to Romero Flores. Thank you very much. Shout out to Derek Azevedo. As Vado, yeah, man. As Vado. That's my guy. That's Beautiful. my guy. Man. Shout out to Sharon Cordina. Shout out to uh shout out to Rita Boone. Shout out to DeWitt Frazier. Appreciate yeah, you always man. being in the building, supporting man. Real, real cool guy. Life lessons. Life you, lessons know, obviously, you, yeah, man. you know, you know, we gotta say you again. Adriana Boone was in the building earlier. Shout out to her. She probably had to go to bed. Um, you know, we, we do this later on this side of the world. Shout out to John, man. John DeGallo. Is that your parents? Mm, maybe not, but um, shout out to uh John and, and Mariana. They, they definitely came in here supporting um AG, which is Amanda Galley. I wanted to ask her about her 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 is that her middle name or is that her fight name? I don't know, but we're definitely gonna have her on after the oh Saint Mariana Saint Cousins. Cousins, there you oh, go. Cousins, there you go. There you go. Uh, we appreciate you, man. Um, you definitely tune in. We're gonna have more Canadian fighters on. We're going to have fighters from all over the world on the show. Definitely. You never know. Hit the bell icon because when it's shaking, <laughs> you know we baking and letting you, you know all about boxing. You never know who's going to pop up on this show. I promise you because we working. This is the weigh-in show. Make no mistake. There is no equal and you can't duplicate it. Check us on IG at The Weigh-In Boxing. Check us on YouTube at The Weigh-In. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Like. You already know what to do. And if you feel like, you know what I'm saying? What? Bumble her fight name. Thank you, Rita Boone. Next time, I'm going to get a chance to uh, uh, get more depth in that. But that's yeah, man, we definitely got to have her back on again, man. That was fun. Yeah, that was amazing, man. I love yeah. her energy. That, you know you, yeah. you know that's the energy I love. Yeah. And that's that's Francis kind of fighter right there. Like, she said, all I'll the way get through, both man. of them in the same night. Like, what? Yeah. yeah, that's it, man. I'm with that. I'm with that. So, yeah, shout out to everybody. We thank you so very much. We're going to get into some more boxing talk. But, you know, we're going to end it right here on a good note, man. It was It was a great show. Yeah. Um, very insightful, very informative. And, and we're gonna catch you on the next one, man. Greg, any final thoughts, my brother? Just gonna echo what you're saying, man. Thanks to everybody for supporting the show. Even if you didn't make a comment, we appreciate you watching and listening from wherever you are around the world. And definitely tune into the way in Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, 10 p.m. Eastern. And yeah, man, we're gonna come with that heat. And for sure, man, um, continue support supporting Canadian boxing, man, because that's what we're trying to do over here. So appreciate everybody. Yeah, and if you don't know, we definitely got a theme song up here, theme song at the way in, and we have got to let you know. There you go, that. Derek. You're my guy, man. Spence all day. Yeah, you, definitely. You know Hold on, Mariana. <laughs> before you go, check out the song. We yeah. yeah. Check out all the places you can download the podcast. Hold up, it's the way in. Call up and you're waiting. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing when you think it's about to end. Should be crank it up again. Hold up, waiting. Call up and you're waiting. Now we get to scrutinize everything you're saying. Switching up the topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing and we do this every day. Never ever duck a fade. Hold up, hold up. Greg and friends just keep it popping, keep it popping. Drop and now let's switching up the daily topics. Switch it up. The latest interviews. Okay, okay, we got it. Okay, we got it. Your favorite podcast, my boy. Yeah, we the hottest. Hold up. You got a way in. Articulate, explain it. Explain it. Lay it all out for debate. Drop and game. No, we ain't playing. Two squad fans, let me know where you're at. It's all about a fight. Who got that strap? All your biases can slay. Let your boys duck in the fade. Hold up. It's the way in. Call up and you're way in. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics. Dropping knowledge. We ain't playing. When you think it's about should we crank it up again? Hold up. Hey, you already know what to do, man. Wash your hands, wear your face mask, and stay away from the COVID parties, man, so we can stop getting shut down over here. I'm trying, yeah, to, man, be safe. Out, man. I'm trying <laughs> to get out the house, man. Y'all do y'all part. Stay away from the COVID parties and them gatherings, and let's let's get back to getting together the right way. Greg? Where'd you go? Everybody take it easy, man. We'll see you on the next one. Peace and love, y'all.